diatomic hydrogen. So instead of what BMW discovered was that their hydrogen cars on the same displacement engine got about 80% of the power of a, that same engine running in gasoline. Uh, running with monatomic hydrogen, you get about 120% of the power. So you have uh, about a 40% increase in overall power from uh, canistered hydrogen. And uh, my interest evolved from that because I, I met a friend who was working in, in the Newman technology, and Joseph Newman was, a, was an inventor that I, I learned about as a, as a teenager. In 1963, uh, Newman drove his car from Mississippi to Washington, D.C. to, to uh, uh, demonstrate to the congressman uh, this magnetic motor that, that was a free energy motor that would run indefinitely without any additional input. And uh, it was touted at that time as being a, you know, an engine or motor of the future, but he was never able to get a patent on it, for one thing. And uh, and he had been trying to promote that technology ever since the, at least as far as I know, from the early 60s. And uh, so this friend of mine had, had built a Newman motor, that little motor that's back there. It's a, called a flower pot motor. It's, it was made out of a flower pot that's about this big around and you just wrap some wire around it. And uh, I wanted to find out how, how well it performed, so uh, one day he took four flashlight batteries that were too dead to even light up a flashlight and we put it on that little motor and we ran it for 24 hours straight before the batteries died out completely. So it's a very efficient motor to say the least. And uh, since then I've learned, <clears throat> I've met a friend who has, uh, who has the rights to all of the Newman technology and pretty soon we'll be uh, hoping to commercialize the Newman motor so that people can start using it to power the homes and cars. And, and uh, uh, also the uh, one of the thing that's on display back there, the bicycle wheel is called a Bedini uh, SSG, which stands for a schoolgirl motor. And the reason it's called the SSG is that a 10 year old schoolgirl entered that in uh, her science fair and was the winner. And none of the uh, teachers of, of science could figure out how, over a three-day period of time, one car battery could keep that motor running. And uh, we've had, I, I haven't been able to get it running today, I, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it, but we've had that, that uh, motor running continuously for six weeks, simply switching positions of batteries because one of the batteries is the running battery and the other battery is being charged. And it turns out that the battery that's being charged gains more charge than the drain on the running battery. And uh, uh, well, John Bedini explains that as drawing energy from the environment into the system and keeps it running continuously. Now we have to keep switching the batteries back and forth between being the running battery and the charging battery. But you can also automate that system with, with electronics. So, uh, we've never gone that far with it, but it can be done. And we stopped it intentionally after six weeks because we just had to get on with our lives. You know, had other things to do. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, another one of the technologies I'm working on right now is a uh, solar cooker. And uh, all of the solar cookers that I've seen on the market are, look sort of like boxes lined with foil and with movable flaps so that you can change the, change the reflection of the sun into the box to heat, heat up food. And one of, the, one of the deficiencies of that is it's a low temperature cooker. So the one that I've designed has a, a short parabolic trough, it's three feet long. And the, the uh, tube at the focal point of the parabolic trough is connected to a uh, copper tubing that's that's uh, coiled up into a spiral coil that looks like a burner on a stove. And although I'm not finished with it yet, I'm expecting temperatures in a, somewhere around the range of 300 degrees so that you can do some real serious cooking with it. And uh, 
So anyway, the the electrolyzer back there that I mentioned that Ed Holgate had, had uh, made for me, uh, originally designed to run an RX-7, but I linked up with a guy who wanted to make a conversion with a generator to run on water. And having seen Spody, the sponsor of this event, run his generator up at the uh, Jarbos Mill back in June, uh, inspired me to uh, uh, hook this up to this six and a quarter kilowatt generator, and that's the project I'm working on right now. And we expect to have it running possibly within two or three weeks. But we had to, one of the things that happens with a, with a small four cycle engine, and people who've worked in this technology understand that it has a thing called a waste spark. In a four cycle engine, generally speaking, the, the spark plug fires every second revolution. But in a, in a waste spark, the spark plug fires every revolution, and it makes it difficult in dealing with hydrogen and oxygen because it's so explosive. And uh, so we, we're having to replace the original ignition with an electronic ignition and designing all of that and getting all the parts manufactured. You know, it takes a little bit of time, but we expect to have that finished, like I said, within two to three weeks. And uh, that's basically stuff I'm working on right now. So. Uh, Anyway, that's uh...